Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And just last night, I started a new series on Corel Draw Tips and Tricks for Beginners. And I went over all the menu items. I went over the toolbars in part one and two. This is part three. And I'm going to go over the toolbox, which is your all your tools on your left-hand side of your screen. <clears throat> Somebody was kind of not upset, but complained that I went too fast last night. So I'm going to just, I'm going to do two tools a video. I'm going to do the pick tool tonight and the shape tool. The pick tool is to pick stuff. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and pick those and I can delete them. I selected them all with the marquee box. You can pick anything. You can pick from the center. If you have uh, the object is uh, considered filled, like if we draw a rectangle, I can pick it from the middle because it's Corel has told me, or I'm letting it say it's filled. Instead of having to pick on that line, I can pick anywhere in the object. Of course, these are filled objects. So that's the pick tool. You can pick, let's say we want to, we want all, all the uh, ones on the outside, but we don't want these two columns. You can select those and then actually hold down the shift key and select these and it deselected the center ones. I'm going to hit delete. So it kept the ones I hold, held down the shift key. That's one way to do it. When you're working, and this isn't the best scenario, but it's a, the best one I could think of. So that's the pick tool. Then there's the freehand pick tool. And whatever you circle with the freehand pick tool, it's going to pick. So if you want to get the freehand pick tool and go and do this diagonal of these, and I don't know if I got 100% of that last one. I didn't. So it's pretty... You have to make sure you get the whole thing when you're doing the freehand pick tool. There's a way around that. So I've got all four. I'm going to hit delete. So that's the freehand pick tool. It's very useful when you're trying to do something and just get a few out. Now, you could always do what I did before with the normal pick tool. You could select all these and then hold down the shift and deselect these four and then hit delete and it's going to save those four. So that's the freehand pick tool. I'm going to go over quickly about the uh, the other tool that I've never really used. It's kind of fun to play with. It's called the free freehand transform. You can take a shape, rectangle, anything, and just by I'm just moving my mouse right now, moving it up and down. Now I'm moving it left and right. I don't really see the use for this, but it could be quite fun. You know, if you're doing something and let's draw an ellipse over here. And then with the freehand pick tool, you actually have to click on it because I had the ellipse tool. You can do the same thing. This probably is going to be more useful than, than a square. You could draw a, a, an oval if you need to. I mean, one thing it'd be good about, let's back up here. I was just thinking control D and make a duplicate of that guy. And then use this to make a, you could see the ring going around another object. So that's the free transform tool. Then the next tool we're going to talk about is the shape tool. Very important. Let me get rid of some of these things. Well, you know, one thing I want to talk about before I do this, you know, if you hold down the alt key when you're picking them, you don't have to pick the whole thing. Anything it just slightly touches, it picks. So same thing a while ago when I was trying to do the freehand pick tool. Let's put those back so I have enough angles. And I'm going to just hold down the alt key. And then that way I can just do that. And it picked those four because I just touched them with the alt key hold held down. All right, now let's go to the shape tool. First time with the shape tool, this is a rectangle. We're going to go to object, convert it to a curve, and now it has nodes. Nodes are ends of lines, and it doesn't have to be the end of the line because we can select those two and go right here and add a node. It added a node there and here. But you can see I can, 
and I can double add a node just by double clicking. This is all a line. So, but if I take it, let me back up. Let me take it right here and then right click and turn everything into a curve. Now look at the difference. So that's the shape tool. Now there's many, many forms of the shape tool. We can go, it's, this is actually already a cusp. A cusp means you can move one, one handle, one, one side at a time. If you don't have a cusp on, let's right click and turn it into a smooth, then it's gonna move both handles equally and smooth. There's a lot you can do with, the, with this tool. The other tool below the, the shape tool is the smoothing tool. It started in X7, it's one of my favorite tools. Let's add a few more nodes in here. So we've got a kind of irregular shape and let's, let's make it a little bumpy. So we're just making a little bit bumpy like a clip art would be. Let's zoom in here. Let's grab the shape tool or the smoothing tool and you can change the size. I've got it set on three inches. I've got the rate at 20. You can go all the way to 100, but just be careful when you're doing that. And look how it's smoothing out those rough spots. So this is a smoothing tool. Very, very useful when you're trying to draw and smooth. Everything else kind of here is just kind of plain. Uh, you don't, I don't use them like very often, but you can smear stuff, you know, smear. You can twirl, and I do use this quite a bit. That's pretty cool when you can do stuff like that. Go right in the corner and twirl things. There's the attract and appel, repel. It's almost like anything else. I've got it where it's actually attracted now. So then we could can't really, so here's up here, you go to repel, and now it's doing the opposite, it's repelling. It's getting away from my item. Pretty useful. The next thing is the smudge tool that's not, I don't really use it very much. Let's make it three inches. And then you can, and you can have all different shapes and, you know, angles, but you can smudge things up. You know, I've got it set way too strong and, and way too big. Let's set it like the 0.5 of an inch. So it's quite a bit littler. And it's going to just kind of smudge things up. Don't really see the use for it very much. But then this, there is one called the roughing. Let's get to a straight line down at the bottom. I have used this quite a bit. Because in the roughing, there's actually this right here. You can tell it the frequency of the spikes. You can tell it the... Uh, angle, you can tell it how big, and we can take, let's make this thing one inch. And what, look at what it, look what it's doing. It's almost like it is a zipper effect. And you can uh, dry it out, change the number of spikes, roughing area. Uh, there's a lot you can do with this. You can change the nib size. You can, now right now it's doing stuff at a 45. Let's do stuff at a 90. And we'll come down and it's just 90 degrees off the surface. Matter of fact, you can't even tell I'm doing anything because it's, look at that, it's roughing it up that way. I've never really done anything but 45 and 45 is gonna give you like a zipper effect. You need to select the item and go down. It's pretty cool, but here's a good showing what you can do with the smoothing tool after you've roughed it up. Grab the smoothing tool and look at that you can smooth it right back. So that's the tool tools of this lesson, the pick tool and the shape tool. I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.